The great William Shakespeare said, what's in a name? What does it really matter what someone is called? Well, as it turns out, in some places in the world, it actually matters a lot. This is Ma Cheng from Beijing, China. Ma, of course, is her family surname. In Chinese culture, the family name goes first. Cheng is her given name. It was picked out for her, especially by her grandfather. But the Chinese government is trying to force her to pick a new name. They refuse to acknowledge her given name because it's not on the list of names that their government computers can read. Apparently, there is a name shortage in China. China has a population of 1.4 billion people. 85% of the Chinese share just 100 different family names. By comparison, the United States is a quarter of the population of China, 325 million people, and we share 70,000 different family names. The result is that in China, it's very easy to mistake one person for another person of the same name. There are over 92 million people in China with the last name Wang. There are 91 million with the last name Li. There are 86 million with the last name Zhang. We have a saying here in America, any Tom, Dick, or Harry. Harry. In China, the saying is any Wong, Li, or Zhang. <laughs> True story. The most common name here in America is John Smith. According to the U.S. Census, there's about 47,000 John Smiths right now. In China, there are 2.3 million men with the name Zhang Wei. That's more than the population of Pittsburgh. So it's hard for the Chinese government and the banks and the police and everyday people to keep straight who's who. One middle school teacher had three students named Lu Fong, so she nicknamed them Big Lu, Little Lu, and Middle Lu. That's a true story. And that brings us to Ma Cheng. Increasingly, Chinese parents are searching for unique first names that might help distinguish their children from millions of others. There are roughly 20 million families with the surname Ma, it means horse. When Ma Cheng was born, her grandfather diligently searched for a special name for her. He was a learned man, and he went through the Chinese dictionaries until he found the perfect name. It's a very obscure Chinese character. In fact, it's the longest character in the Chinese alphabet. It's the symbol for horse, squeezed together three times, and it means galloping. So Ma Cheng means galloping horse. Growing up, Ma Cheng loved her name because no one else had it. It distinguished her from the 20 million other Ma's. But when the Chinese government implemented a new computer program, it, it created a problem for Ma Cheng. The, there is somewhere in the neighborhood of 55,000 Chinese characters, but the government computers can only read about 32,000 characters. Ma Cheng's given name is one of those characters that the government computers can't read. So they told her, your name is not on our list, you must change it. Since 2009, Ma Cheng has been fighting the Chinese government to get her name added to the list. Because her name isn't on the list, she can't get a government identification card. She can't get medical benefits. She can't get a driver's license. She can't get a passport or a license to marry or open a new bank account. Although she was born a citizen, she is persona non grata because her name is not on the list. 
tonight I want to share with you about another very important list of names. It's a list the Bible tells us about. It's a list of names in heaven called the Lamb's Book of Life. In this book are listed the names of all the redeemed, those who will spend eternity in heaven with God. So let's talk about this book of names for a moment or two this evening. First of all, what is the Lamb's Book of Life? In both Testaments of the Bible, we read about two different kinds of books. The Bible mentions books on earth that record the deeds of great people. The biblical book called Numbers mentions the book of the wars of the Lord. It records Israel's experiences in the wilderness on their way to the promised land. Joshua mentions the book of Jasher. It records the deeds of Israel's heroes. First Kings mentions the book of the Acts of Solomon. I wish that Solomon had written down where his gold mine was hidden. Some books record the deeds of great people and other books simply record names. They are registers of citizens. The biblical books of Ezra and Nehemiah talk about a registry of Jewish prisoners of war that came home to Jerusalem after captivity in Babylon. In the Gospel of Luke chapter 2, Joseph and Mary traveled to Joseph's ancestral home, Bethlehem, to register in a census. It was during this time that Jesus was born. The Bible also says that God has two different sets of books in heaven. John, the beloved apostle, was exiled for his faith on the desert island of Patmos. And on one particular Sunday morning while John was worshiping the Lord, he was caught up in a spectacular vision of heaven. In the biblical book of Revelation chapter 20, John witnessed the scene of the final judgment of all human souls before God's throne. And while John was watching, two different sets of books were opened. The first set of books contains the record of all the deeds of every person who has ever lived. The Bible says that it is appointed to every one of us to die once and after that to face the judgment. It's not true that will be reincarnated again and again and have another chance to do life better. It's not true that at death we're annihilated, that we cease to exist. It's not true that we automatically become angels and watch over our loved ones left behind on earth. In fact, angels are an entirely different class of created beings. The Bible says that after our death, we must each stand before God and give an account of ourselves to him. Most importantly, Jesus told us about that. He said that we will each answer to God for every word that we have spoken. In heaven, there's a book which records every one of my deeds and every one of your deeds. Every one of my words and every one of your words. I had a little incident back in December. I was in a rush and I came out. My landscaper happened to be, I, I live in a parsonage just down the road. The church cares for the property and, and our landscaper was out uh, trimming my hydrangea bushes. I love my hydrangea bushes. And we had a nice little chat for about 10 minutes about pruning hydrangea bushes. And then I jumped into my little convertible and I threw it into reverse. And I forgot that the landscaper's truck was parked in the driveway. And that little convertible went from zero to 60 in about 15 feet. And I annihilated the back of my convertible. Jesus heard the words that I said when I smashed my convertible and he wrote them down in his book. Yeah, you're looking at me all holy. 
You got a few things written in your book, true, too. All of our deeds, good, bad, and ugly, will be opened as we stand in the awesome presence of the righteous judge of all the earth. And we won't be judged. Listen, listen, listen. This is important. You have to know this. We will not be judged on the basis of how we compared to one another. We'll be judged on the basis of how we measured up to his standard of holiness. And St. Paul already told us how that one ends. It's a standard that we all fall short of. But fortunately, there's very good news because there is a second book, and it's called the Book of Life. There are at least 14 references in the Bible to the Book of Life. Moses talked about it. David talked about it. The prophets Isaiah, Daniel, Malachi talked about the Book of Life. St. Paul talked about it. St. John talked about it. But most importantly, Jesus talked about it. Jesus said, rejoice, your name stands written in heaven. What did Jesus mean by that? Why is inclusion in this book a cause for rejoicing? What does it mean to have your name written in the book of life? Well, if your name is written in the book of life, God regards you as one of his own. God calls those listed in the book his people. They are personally known to God. God won't mistake you for Big Lou or Little Lou or Middle Lou. God protects those whose names are written in the book. He promises to send angels to help them and to deliver them from earthly troubles. If your name is written in the book of life, God regards you as a righteous person. If your name, listen, listen, here's the good news. If your name is written in the book of life, it overrides what is written in the book of deeds. If your name is written in the book of life, God promises to have compassion on you as a father. God promises to spare you from judgment. God distinguishes you from wicked people. If your name is written in the book of life, your place in heaven is secure. And that's very good news. God calls those written in his book, my treasured possession. God is not about to let you go. If your name is in the book, God will safeguard you from falling into spiritual deception and idolatry. John saw in his vision a time coming at the end of the age when the whole world will be taken in by the deception of Satan. They will all worship a false god. But John saw that those whose names are written in the Lamb's book of life will not be deceived. They will not worship the false god. Because their names are written in the book, they're able to spot deception and avoid it. Their hearts are protected. Jesus said, rejoice, your name stands written in heaven. That means your, your name is written permanently. It's written in stone. In his vision, John heard Jesus make a promise. I will never blot that person out of my book of life, but I will acknowledge his or her name before my father. If your name is written in the book of life, you will enjoy eternal life. You will share in God's glory. Beloved, I came to tell you good news this evening. At the end of this life, we are going to see Jesus face to face and we are going to be thrilled by him. In fact, the Bible says that we're going to see a manifestation of God's full glory that no created being has ever yet seen. And when we see it, it is going to transform us entirely. 
We'll become co-heirs with Christ. We'll be invited. You know, the Bible says he's going to invite us to, to come sit right alongside him on his throne. He's going to share with us a portion of his own glory. We'll enjoy the splendor of the new Jerusalem, a place who, whose beauty surpasses the capacity of human language to describe. We'll receive our citizenship card with all the rights and the privileges that it affords. The Bible says we'll shine like the brightness of heaven. We will shine like stars forever and ever. If your name is written in the book of life, you'll have a changed perspective on life here on earth and you'll have an abiding sense of joy. Actually, the inspiration for my talk tonight is a man who has helped us out a great deal on this building project. He knows who he is. Whenever I ask how he's doing, he always replies, Pastor, I'm going to heaven. Everything else is gravy. My name is written down in heaven. Everything else comes after that. And you know, that's absolutely right. Knowing that our name is written down in heaven gives us a different perspective of our trials and troubles here on earth. Though they may be intensely painful at the moment, it's not how our story ends. Jesus said in Luke 10 verse 20, rejoice. The, the verb tense is continuous. It means rejoice and rejoice and rejoice and rejoice. Your name is written in heaven. A few weeks ago, we lost the greatest American preacher of the 20th century, Billy Graham. The greatest American preacher of the 19th century, was a man called D.L. Moody. D.L. Moody said, the grand question of life is, is my name written in heaven? You see, to have your name written in the book of life is worth more than all of the wealth and the pleasures of the world combined. Jesus said, what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world but loses his own soul what does the wildest earthly success matter if you fail to inherit eternal life what does it matter if you have the biggest toys or the latest gadgets or the fanciest baubles if you miss out on eternity with God what does it matter if you have the best looks, if you have the perfect physique? What does it matter if you're the man or you're the woman if you miss out on the glories of heaven? What do piles of money matter if you don't receive a pardon on the day that you stand before the judge of the earth? To have your name written in the book is worth more than being received well by people. It's worth more than being popular. It's worth more than having a big following. In Luke 10, Jesus sent the disciples out to spread their wings. He sent them out to, to do some preaching and some healing ministry. The disciples came back giddy with excitement. Everywhere they went, they were received well. They had big results. Jesus said, you know, that's great, but having your name written in the book is far more important. Paul said, what use is it if after I have preached to others, I should become a castaway from God's presence? To have your name written in the book is worth more than any other spiritual experience that you might have. It's worth more than any noble work that you do. Oh, it's wonderful to experience the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit working through us, being in us and, and touching others through us. But it's most important to know that your name is written in the book. You might do a lot of noble work. You might be involved with feeding or educating or heal, healing needy people. We're involved in that work all around the world. 
You might be involved with rescuing oppressed people. All those things are important, but it is far more important to know that your name is written in the book. So how does your name get written in the book of life? The Bible makes a few things perfectly clear. First of all, the book of life belongs to God. It is his book. And he is the one who writes the names in it. In prayer, Moses called it the book that you, God, have written. In his vision, John saw that the names in the book were written before time itself began, before any other created beings existed. Only God could have done the writing because only God was there. We can't add our own name to the book, nor can we add anyone else's name. As much as we wish we could, we can't petition some third party to help get our name into the book. There's no saint that we can call on. There's no angel that we can look to that can intervene on our behalf. Only God writes the names in his book. Secondly, it's clear that what disqualifies us from the book is the problem of sin. God says in Exodus chapter 32, whoever has sinned against me, I will blot out of my book. In Psalm 69, David says that those who live as enemies of God will be blotted out of the book of the righteous. They will not be listed. Revelation 21 says that those who do what is impure, those who do what is shameful or deceitful, are not written in the book of life, they will never enter heaven. Now this is a major problem. As we've already seen, there are our books in heaven with all of our deeds. And all of us have fallen short of God's standard of holiness. St. Paul wrote, for all have sinned and fallen short of God's glory. Isaiah wrote, all we like sheep have turned away. We've turned everyone to his own way. Solomon wrote, who can say, I have kept my heart pure, I am clean and without sin. The truth is, none of us deserves to be written in God's book of life. We all deserve the punishment of death we all deserve eternal separation from God. But the Bible tells us something else about the book. The full title of the book is the book of life of the lamb who was slain. The way that any one of us makes it into the book of life is not on the basis of our deeds. None of us can save ourselves through an accumulation of good deeds. We can't even save ourselves if our good deeds outweigh our bad deeds. If that were possible, all that would be necessary would be God's book of deeds. The second book, the book of life, it wouldn't be needed. But the second book, it does exist. And it is necessary to, to override what's written in the first set of books. The way that anyone makes it into the book of life is only on the basis of what Jesus, the Lamb of God, has done. And that brings us to why we've gathered this evening on Good Friday. We've come to commemorate. We've come to celebrate. But listen, more importantly, we have come to participate in what Jesus did on the cross 2,000 years ago. On Good Friday, Jesus laid down his life as a sacrifice in our place. On the cross, Jesus took upon himself our sins and the sins of the whole world. St. Paul wrote, God made him who knew no sin to become sin for us on the cross so that we might become the righteousness of God. St. Peter wrote, He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree 
so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness. On the cross, Jesus poured out his innocent blood in order to pay the penalty for our guilt and to satisfy God's righteous judgment. Paul wrote, God presented Christ as a sacrifice of atonement through the shedding of his blood to be received by faith. Jesus offered himself as a sacrifice in order to secure a divine pardon for us. Paul wrote, Christ reconciled us to God the Father by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. If you've always wondered what is the significance of Good Friday, if you've always wondered what is the meaning of the cross, I want to help you understand it tonight. It was an exchange transaction. Jesus traded his holy life for my sinful life and your sinful life. I've noticed something about myself lately that troubles me a little bit. The headlines are so full of shootings and so full of terror attacks that I feel like I'm almost becoming numb to them. It seems daily there's awful stories from, from right here at home and from all around the world that it's, it's just so much, I feel like I don't even feel them anymore. On Wednesday, France buried a national hero, police officer Arnaud Beltram. One week ago today, Friday a week ago, a 25-year-old Islamic terrorist stormed a supermarket he killed three people, he wounded 12 others, and he took a cashier hostage, a young mother of a, a little two-year-old daughter. Officer Beltram negotiated with the terrorist from outside the supermarket to trade places with that young cashier. While the crowd looked on, he laid his weapon down in the parking lot and he walked through the door of the supermarket with his hands lifted up. Moments later, the young cashier hurried out unharmed. After a three-hour standoff, Officer Beltram was stabbed to death. Special forces rushed in and killed the terrorist, but it was too late for Officer Beltram. He traded his life for the life of a young mother. And that's exactly what Jesus did for each one of us on Good Friday. On the pavement of Jerusalem, Jesus laid down his heavenly dignity, his heavenly authority. He laid down his heavenly father. He said, Peter, don't you know I could ask my father and my father would send 12 legions, 72,000 angels to rescue me. But Jesus laid it all down and he walked through the door of the supermarket. He walked up a hill called Calvary and he laid down his life so that hostages like you and I could go free. The only reason that anyone makes it into the book of life at all is because the Lamb of God was slain. The Bible says it's not because of righteous things we have done, but it's because of his mercy he saved us through the washing of spiritual rebirth through Jesus Christ. What is the Lamb's book of life? What does it mean to have your name written there? How does your name get written there? And finally, how can you and I know for sure that our name is written in the book of life? I want you to listen. The choir is going to come back, but I don't want you to watch them. Would you listen to me? Because this is the most important part that I have to share with you. How can you and I know for sure that our names are written in the book? As a pastor, I frequently find myself at the sides of those who are about to make the transition from this life into eternity. Some are very angry 
at the injustice of death. Some are fearful. They're unsure of of what they're going to find on the other side. Some are stoic. Some are poetic. Some are philosophical. Some are at complete peace because they have a blessed assurance that they're going into the arms of Jesus. Some, to my dismay, take a wait-and-see stance. Even in their very last hour, they suppose that they'll have the opportunity to choose faith after they see what's on the other side. But the Bible warns that that is a very foolish strategy. It's appointed to us all once to die, and after that, to face the judgment. Moses was sure that his name was written in the book of life. Jesus gave assurance to the disciples that their names were written in the book of life. St. Paul wrote to the Philippians with assurance that his faithful friends were written in the book of life. How can we have that assurance too? Well, I want to share three quick thoughts with you and we're done. Three thoughts and, and we're done. How can you and I know for sure if our name is written in the Lamb's book of life? First of all, you listening? You know that your name is written in the book if you respond to the Lamb. Do you believe in Jesus? Oh, there might be many things that you don't yet understand. I've been following Jesus for 43 years. I I received him when I was negative (laughs) 10. I studied Jesus formally for eight years. I've been preaching Jesus for 30 years. And there's still many things I don't understand. My wife was number one in our seminary class. She understands it all, but there's things I don't understand. Maybe there's still lots of questions you have, but deep down inside, you just know that you know that you know that it's true. You know that Jesus is the Son of God, the Savior of the world. That spark of faith in your heart, it didn't originate with you. It came from God. Just just like he is the one who writes our names in the book of life, he is the one who opens our hearts and gives us the ability to believe on Jesus. He gives us the gift of faith. Do you respond to the Lamb? Is Jesus alive to you? Or is he just uh, some dead man hanging high on a church wall? Do you think about Jesus? Does he interest you? Does he fascinate you? Uh, Are you hungry to know the words of Jesus? Uh, Are you eager to learn about him? Jesus said, my sheep, they know my voice and they follow me. Is worshiping Jesus something you look forward to? Is fellowshipping with him in prayer something you look forward to? Do you respond to the Lamb? Do you have a sense that Jesus is with you? You see, when your name is written in the book of life, the Holy Spirit comes and he enters into your heart. And the Holy Spirit creates a a living connection between you and Jesus. He creates a bond that assures you that you belong to Jesus and Jesus belongs to you. My moment of believing came on my bed one night when I was eight years old. Can't tell you that my bed shook. I can't tell you that a light shone from heaven or I I heard God's voice, but I can tell you in that moment that I prayed a prayer of believing the beautiful presence of Jesus came to me And I want to tell you that he has never left me since. What about you? Have you had your moment of believing? Have you had that moment when you just knew that you knew? If you've never had that moment of believing, my prayer is that you'll have it tonight before you leave this place. In fact, I really believe that right now God's moving in someone's heart. 
I believe that he's igniting the spark of faith in your heart. You want to respond to the lamb and tonight you can. How can we know for sure if our name is written in the book? Second, you know your name is written in the book if you live to please the lamb. Malachi says that those written in the book fear the Lord. They reverence him. They honor him. They live lives of faithful dedication to the lamb. They live pure and honorable and honest lives. Those written in the book serve the Lord. They're used by God to help others. Beloved, just because our names are written in the Lamb's book of life doesn't mean that God's book of deeds will be completely irrelevant to us on Judgment Day. In fact, the book of deeds will show that there was a radical change in our living once we responded to the Lamb. The book of deeds will show that, that before we responded to the Lamb, we lived self-centered, self satisfying lives before we responded to the lamb we disregarded God we broke his commandments but after we responded to the lamb we lived to please him does that mean we get it right every time oh I wish it did it doesn't but it does mean that I rely on his grace and I rely on the Holy Spirit to make me more and more like Jesus every day And listen to me, God will re reward every act of loving obedience and service to the Lamb. You see, the book of deeds is a book of condemnation for those who are not written in the book of life. But the book of deeds is a book of commendation for those who are written in the Lamb's book of life. I just preached myself happy with that line. That was good right there. How can we know for sure if your name is written in the book? Finally, you know your name is written in the book of life if you lead others to the Lamb. Daniel said that those written in the book lead others to righteousness. They are soul winners. Just as Moses interceded for his people, those written in the book pray earnestly for the salvation of others. Those written in the book are laborers for Christ and his gospel, whether it's preaching like I'm doing or whether it's preparing the way so that others can hear. It took the loving sacrifices of a lot of people written in the book to prepare this sanctuary for tonight's service. Thank you. What is the Lamb's book of life? What does it mean to have your name written in it? How does your name get written in it? And how can you know that your name is written in it? On this Good Friday, I want to put to you the grand question of life. Is your name written in heaven? Are you listed in the Lamb's book of life, do you have the assurance of Moses or David or Paul? Do you have Jesus' assurance? Have you responded to the Lamb? Have you had your own personal moment of believing? If not, perhaps tonight is your night to know that your name is written down. Perhaps tonight is your night to receive that spark of faith, the gift of faith in your heart. Tonight, are you able to answer yes to the grand question of life? Beloved, please, this is a holy moment. And the presence of the Lord is here. Everybody look at me. Do you know that your name is written in heaven. There's nothing more important in all of life than to know that when this journey is over, you're going to go spend eternity in heaven. The Bible says at his right hands, there are pleasures forevermore. Do you know that your name is written in heaven? My assurance began 
with a prayer of believing one night when I was eight. And maybe for someone here tonight, this is your night to receive assurance. Tonight is your night to respond to the Lamb. I'm going to lead you in a prayer of believing right where you're standing. Would you bow your heads with me this evening? There are many, many in this room who, like me, you can precise to that, you can point to that precise moment when you responded to the Lamb. Many of you, like me, you can remember when you first prayed that prayer of believing. You can point to that moment. But maybe there's someone here tonight and you're not sure. You, you can't really point to a specific moment that you, you knew you believed. Maybe tonight should be that night. Good Friday, 2018. Our first service in our new building. What a wonderful way to remember that this was the night that you responded to the Lamb. In just a moment, I'm going to invite everyone to join in a prayer of believing. But if you want to pray that prayer from your heart for the very first time tonight, or maybe you're here this evening and, and it's been a very long time since you prayed that prayer and a lot of water has gone under the bridge since then and tonight is the night to renew your faith. While your heads are bowed, if, if you want to pray that prayer of believing for the very first time or for the first time in a long time, would you just raise your hand up? I'm not going to embarrass you in any way, but would you raise your hand up high so that I can see it and so that God can see it? You want to pray, oh, there's hands all over. You want to pray that prayer of believing this evening for the first time or for the first time in a long time. Listen, maybe some things have happened recently and there's just been distance between you and the Lord and you just want to come back to him again and pray that prayer. Would you lift your hand up real high? Lift it up high so that I can see it and so that God can see it. If you're out of the room, if you're in one of the overflow rooms, I can't see you but God can see you and you can lift up your hand in that holy moment. I want to ask everyone now, would you lift up your hands with us? And I'm going to lead in a prayer and I want to ask everyone, if you're willing, would you follow after me? And we're going to pray a prayer of response to the Lamb. We're going to pray a prayer of believing together. Listen, something's going to happen when you pray this prayer. All the things written in the book of deeds about you, that they're going to be hung on Jesus on the cross. And Jesus' righteousness is going to be put on you. A white robe is going to be put on you and it's going to override everything written in the book of deeds about you. Would you lift up your hands together? We're going to pray and the Holy Spirit's going to come. You're going to feel Him in your heart connecting you to Jesus, giving you an assurance that you belong to Jesus and that Jesus belongs to you. I'm going to lead you follow. If you're willing, would you lift up your hands? Would you lift up your face to heaven? And I want you to follow me in a nice, clear voice. Let's pray. Father, oh, you can do better. Father, thank you for loving me. Thank you for sending your only son. Jesus, thank you for coming. You lived a sinless life for me. You died on the cross for me. Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you rose from the dead. I confess with my mouth, Jesus is Lord. Jesus, I'm responding to you tonight. I'm asking you to come be my Lord. Forgive my sins. Make me a new person. Write my name in God's book. I ask in Jesus' name, amen. Come on, would you give the Lord a good praise? Oh, I know we can do better. Let's give the Lord a good praise this evening.
I want you to I want you to do something tonight and I want you to listen very closely to to my instructions if you would please on your way in you received a pen there's a little verse of scripture on the pen it says rejoice your name is written in heaven Luke chapter 10 verse 20 Good Friday 2018 there's something special about this pen that you might not have discovered yet it lights up now wait 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 okay I went this is what I want you to do Listen, I'm going to let everybody light your pen in just a minute, okay? So just, so just wait. Just wait. If you prayed that prayer for the first time tonight from your heart, if you know that tonight was the night that you responded to the Lamb, if you prayed that prayer for the first time, or you prayed that prayer for the first time in a long time, I want you and you only, everybody else just wait. I want you and you only. I want you to light up your pen. I want you to hold it up real high so I can see. Come on, have you prayed that prayer for the first time or the first time in a long time? I want you to light up that pen and lift it up. Hallelujah. There's a new name written down in glory. And it's yours. Now, everybody, if you know your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life, would you light up your pen? And come on, let's just show everybody. The Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Come on, would you give the Lord a good praise in this place this evening? Hallelujah.